हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट नोज एंड पैरानिजल साइनसिस ओके सो वेन एवर वी टेक द वर्ड नोज द पैरानिजल साइनसिस आर इंक्लूडेड इन इट एंड दे आर अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट सो लेट्स फर्स्ट स्टार्ट विद द पैरानिजल साइनसिस सो वट आर दीज पैरानिजल साइनसिस ओके सो साइनसिस मीन्स एम टी स्पेस अराउंड द नोज पैरानिजल सो दीज आर एयर फिल्ड कैविटीज अराउंड द नोज and they open inside the nasal cavities okay so how many paranasal sinuses are there we have four pairs four on each side right so what are these four paranasal sinuses as you can see number 1 we have the maxillary sinus right so number 1 we have the maxillary sinus number 2 we have the frontal sinus number 3 we have the ethmoid sinus and number 4 we have the sphenoid sinus right so we have four pairs of paranasal sinuses maxillary ethmoid frontal and sphenoid let's talk about each one of them one by one right so let's start with the maxillary sinus so this maxillary sinus is in the maxillary bone right so we have a pair of maxillary bone one on each side so we have in it the maxillary sinus this is the sinus which is first to develop first to develop embryologically this is first to develop starts developing at 12 weeks 12 weeks 3 months of intrauterine life 3 months of intrauterine life right so this is the first to develop this maxillary sinus this is the largest paranasal sinus right so let's look over here this maxillary sinus this is the largest paranasal sinus adult volume is 15 ml adult volume is 15 ml okay so largest paranasal sinus volume is 15 ml okay so because it is a very big cell we also call it as maxillary antrum right so we also call it as maxillary antrum also known as antrum antrum of high more so you can also remember it like you see it is the largest paranasal sinus so largest so high and more okay so antrum of high more largest paranasal sinus right this sinus keeps on developing and reaches adult size by 15 to 18 years of age so remember 15 ml is the volume 15 to 18 years of age right so reaches adult size by 15 to 18 years of age okay so now this is the sinus which is first to develop maxillary sinus okay so now what comes after maxillary sinus after maxillary sinus comes the ethmoid sinus after maxillary sinus we have the ethmoid sinus so you can see over here ethmoid is a group of cells there are small small tiny cells tiny air cells in the ethmoid sinus and we divide them into two separate groups anterior ethmoids and posterior ethmoids right so ethmoid sinus is divided into two groups anterior ethmoidal cells and posterior ethmoidal cells right okay so we have the second sinus to develop that is the ethmoid sinus and then develops the and then develops the sphenoid sinus okay so traditionally it has been taught that the sphenoid sinus sinoid sinus starts developing around 2 years of age okay sinoid sinus starts developing around 2 years of age but but at the time of birth we still have a small sinoid cavity very very small sinoid cavity is present at the time of birth but the nematization the main nematization the sinoid sinus starts around 2 years of age okay now the last to develop the last to develop is the frontal sinus do starts developing after 2 years of age okay frontal sinus starts developing after 2 years of age right so this is the last to develop so we have a sequence sequence is mes maxillary ethmoid sphenoid frontal first to develop is maxillary sinus last to develop is frontal sinus so this is the sequence of development mes 
maxillary ethmoid sphenoid frontal now look in this diagram when you look in the diagram you will see that this sphenoid sinus is quite deep right the sphenoid sinus is quite deep whereas the frontal sinus is just below the skin so therefore when we do a plain x ray when we do a plain x ray the frontal sinus is very quickly visible right so as it is growing it quickly becomes visible on a plain x ray whereas sphenoid sinus takes time to become visible on a plain x ray the sphenoid sinus the sphenoid sinus is visible only by the age of 6 to 7 years whereas frontal sinus it becomes visible on a plain x ray by 4 to 5 years of age right so sphenoid sinus sphenoid sinus is the last to appear on a plain x ray sphenoid sinus is the last to appear on a plain x ray right okay so let's do let's go and do this table let's go and do this table now when we go and do this table you see the maxillary sinus starts developing at 12 weeks it is present at the time of birth ethmoid sinus again present at the time of birth now sphenoid sinus i told you traditional teaching is that the main nematization starts around 2 years but a small sphenoid cavity is present at the time of birth so yes it is also present okay what about frontal sinus so now if we go to the grays lang grays anatomy language grays anatomy language says that the frontal sinus is also present as a small cavity at the time of birth but this cavity this cavity is indistinguishable from anterior ethmoidal cells this cavity is indistinguishable right so that means if somebody ask us a question which of these sinus is not present at the time of birth we can safely mark our answer as the frontal sinus right so this is the sinus that we can say is not present at the at the time of birth because it is indistinguishable at that time from the ethmoid cells right okay and i has told you the sphenoid the sphenoid sinus is the last to appear on a plain x ray it appears by 6 to 7 years of age whereas frontal sinus appears by 4 to 5 years right so this is the last to develop but the sphenoid is the last to appear on a plain x ray okay now let's come to the adult size so when we were discussing the adult size i told you maxillary sinus it reaches adult size by 15 to 18 years of age it reaches adult size by 15 to 18 years of age remember adult volume is 15 ml reaches adult size by 15 to 18 years now ethmoid is a small group of cells so we can deduct 3 out of it we can deduct the 3 out of 15 and we get 12 small group of cells all right so now how to remember sphenoid and frontal so remember the sequence mass maxillary ethmoid sphenoid frontal so this is the sequence of development and you see over here we can take the 15 sphenoid at 15 and frontal at 18 so remember frontal sinus is the ra last to reach adult size frontal sinus is the last to reach adult size right so uh, we have discussed the paranasal sinuses and at me little bit we will be discussing more but since we were talking about the x rays of the paranasal sinuses so let's go and discuss the x rays of the paranasal sinuses right okay so let's come to the waters view most commonly done x ray view most commonly done x ray view for the paranasal sinuses waters view right so what we do in waters view in waters view we make a patient stand facing the x ray plate so as you can see over here patient is standing facing the x ray plate his nose his nose and chin they are both touching the x ray plate so you can see nose and chin they are both touching the x ray plate right now we give a we give an x ray beam from behind we give an x ray beam from behind and it comes out from the mentum it comes out from the mentum this is known as occipito occipito mental view occipito mental view nose chin position 
or occipito mental view right okay so what do we see in water's view what do we see in water's view i am sure you can identify the sinus this over here is the maxillary sinus right so you can identify the maxillary sinus clearly and you can also identify the frontal sinus right okay so you can also identify the orbit over here right so this is the orbit right you can identify the septum right so this is the nasal septum and you can identify the nasal bone also right so you can identify the nasal bone now you see this cell you see the cell the cell between the orbit and the nasal bone this over here it is the ethmoid it is the ethmoid now i have already told you ethmoid is a group of cells divided into two group anterior group and posterior group so what we see over here is anterior ethmoid right so what we see over here is anterior ethmoid cell all right so this is the water's view and if you notice over here the patient's mouth is closed the jaw is closed okay so we can identify the maxilla we can identify the mandible and we see that the jaw is closed right suppose i do this water's view with the open mouth okay so i do the water's view with the open mouth we can also see the sphenoid sinus now we can also see the sphenoid sinus right okay so you see the patient is standing over here once again facing the x ray plate his nose and chin they are again touching the x ray plate right his mouth is now open his mouth is now open all right so this is known as water's view with the open mouth also known as peer's view also known as peer's view right okay so let's go back to the water's view which sinuses are best seen in water's view which sinuses are best seen in water's view or i can put up a question this water's view is the best view for which sinuses best view for which sinuses answer is number 1 maxillary number 2 anterior ethmoids number 1 maxillary number 2 anterior ethmoids okay next question next question which sinus is not visible in water's view which sinus is not visible in water's view okay so the answer is posterior ethmoid answer is posterior ethmoids remember posterior ethmoids is not visible in water's view with a closed mouth or water's view with a open mouth all right so our best answer is posterior ethmoids right if posterior ethmoids is not in the option then of course we can mark the answer answer as sphenoid also but posterior ethmoid is the best answer right okay now the next question what is the best view for best view for frontal sinus right best view for frontal sinus so the best view for frontal sinus is cardwell's view best view for frontal sinus is cardwell's view what we do in cardwell's view in cardwell's view again we make the patient stand facing the x-ray plate so you see over here patient is standing facing the x-ray plate now his nose his nose and forehead they are touching the x-ray plate his nose and forehead are touching the x-ray plate right so this is also known as nose forehead position you give a x-ray beam from behind you give an x-ray beam from behind from the occiput it comes out from the frontal region this is also known as occipito frontal view this is also known as occipito frontal view right okay so nose forehead position or occipito frontal view best view for best view for frontal sinus right okay so these are plain x ray views water's view peer's view cardwell's view these are plain x ray views nowadays we have better technology than x ray so these x rays are not done these days okay or we can say they are in rarely done 
and they are rarely used for clinical practice. Okay, they are almost obsolete. So remember, these X-rays we have studied for the MCQ answers, but they are rarely done these days. They are not the investigation of choice in any of the paranormal sinus condition.